This is for the Maroons in the Blue Mountains of Jamaica. This is for all my Native American moors of Turtle Island just minding their business in Canada until all this colonization bullshit. Ronnie! My bad, auntie. Chill, this is phenomenal. I bet. I'ma call Snuff and let him know we can't rock with that. Snuff was there. He completely with them. <sighs> this happens every time. That's how all my battles got voted. Right after the battle, something weird always happens. And they want me to do something that was never in my contract or part of any discussion. The only difference is that this time, they playing with those weird games before the battle. But just like before, I ain't like them other battle rappers. They could have that battle in the garden. And I'm loyal and I rocks with what's righteous regardless if there's a bag involved or not. What's righteous if there's a bag involved or not? Salute people. How's everybody this beautiful Tuesday? We gonna get into um podcast early this week. Clout take his podcast. Got something going on Thursday, so um just to make sure we keep consecutive um shows, I'll drop the edited version live on on um Thursday. But with that being said, we gonna um yeah we got a lot to discuss. This is definitely our um biggest list of topics for today. Like there's a lot going on in battle rap. There's a lot going on and pop culture and then like i said from episode one this episode of talking about mount rushmore was already in the making for months or maybe the thought of it was years actually but um everything just came together at a perfect time so we about to get right into this um first hope all is well um i know a lot of people probably this is it's less than a week to um christmas now kwanzaa whatever hanukkah whatever you celebrate and if you celebrate and anything um, salute to everybody who out there grinding, doing stuff, um, and whatever they, you're doing. Like the grind is going on, especially when it's the end of the year. Just that in itself makes this time of the year something like um, is always like extra energy going on all around the place. But besides that, I just blame that a lot. Like we just spoke about with the um, with that clip, people doing things for money. That's kind of what I like. This I'm, I'm not blaming that on um, the holidays or the end of the year, but it's definitely a dark cloud over society that got to get addressed. So we're going to address that. We're going to start off with that introduction, some of the dark clouds. We use all week after the battles or after events. We get, put all the shine light on the positivity. We got a lot of legacy things to discuss, a lot of positive elements that we're going to be breaking down, definitely. We're going to definitely... Um, highlight the females, females in battle rap. 2024, I feel like it's going to be their best year. I think 2023 was the best year for female battle rap, but I think it was, it showed more, it was the best year in showing and proving more of the potential and the fact that most of these women who are really at this elite level that we're talking about, they can really hang with and destroy a lot of males, bar for bar. This ain't like boxing or anything like that. Like, I know y'all just seen what happened to a homegirl. Shout out to um, what just happened. That was just a bad look. I mean, matter of fact, I don't even want to go there. I just looked at that. And I, said, I don't know why she did that. But that's like the dark cloud that I'm talking about. Where just because you're the your best at something, you feel like you can bring it to all levels. And you should, you can try. There's nothing wrong with that. And so it's always good to have inspiration and motivation to do something. But um, plan it out better and think about it and practice harder is what I would say, I guess. Anything is possible. but. Don't not don't let the ego take over. All right, so we're gonna get into also um, this whole Mount Rushmore thing. That's the real clear um, focus of this podcast today. We're gonna really start the saga dissecting. This is a you, this is a history. Obviously, ninety five percent of the people who have been using Mount Rushmore or um, even watching this, as a matter of fact, they have no idea that there's actually a um, deep and diabolical history behind Mount Rushmore. This is the only thing that I can say to, re to to make it make sense on why Mount Rushmore is still something that is popular and pushed. It's amazing how it's being pushed more in hip hop culture than anywhere else. There's no, they're actually, most people who are involved with this, they don't want nothing to do with bringing it up. It happened, they want to leave it in the past with all the controversy going on right now with genocides and stuff. Mount Rushmore is directly connected with a genocide. No debates about that. 
Like everything about it says genocide. So we gonna it's a lot of history to cover, but we're gonna start off, we're gonna actually um go into like right where that genocide conversation is about to begin. Cause it's a lot, we're gonna be breaking this stuff, this conversation about Mount Rushmore into pieces. And one thing I'm gonna say for today is um the Mount Rushmore concept as giving it, using it humbly and not um looking down on anybody. It's never gonna be looking down, but it, it does scream something. If once you learn this history, you still comfortable using it. And of course it could come up, it could slip up uh, and, and here and there. But by this time next year, Mount Rushmore should not be a thing in hip hop. Like not no ego drop that I have. I don't want no responsibility for that. Um, I just want to just start pushing the word out that, yo, a lot. I'm not the only one who knows this. A lot of people know this, specifically the natives, specifically the indigenous. They know this history. As you can see, this is you can look all over the place. Just type, type in the true history of Mount Rushmore. This is old stuff. We've been talking about this in the last decade or two. Um, but now it got so bad in hip hop. I'm hearing it in some of the most elite. So what I wanted to do is show and prove, first off, that we have elite battle rappers, males and females, but we have no real criteria and foundation for judging it. It's as if we you, we, we depend on Champion and Jay Black. Shout out to Jay Black and Champion, because what that is actually a solid foundation that we have something that the whole community is looking up to and respecting. You know, they respect the fact that it exists. I'm not going to say everybody respects the list when it comes out and who's chosen as a champion. But Cody and Wody, that's a thing. And we we got to uh, acknowledge that. Um, but that don't have to be the only thing. And if we're going to use this Mount Rushmore thing, that's something that, all right, let's 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 do this the right way then. First off, we're going to break down the real history. And we're going to show, first off, four um, people on, a, on, on Mount Rushmore that in itself is idiocy. That doesn't make sense. But we we gonna break that down one step at a time. Like I said, it's a lot of information and I wanna bomb y'all with too much knowledge. It's a lot. I'm a teacher for years. I've been understanding how to deal with that. What is the young students, middle school, high school, college students, me teaching other teachers, whatever it is, you can't just overload. Information overload is a real thing. So let's, we gonna blend this in. And the first thing we're gonna do before we get into that, um, with, let's actually break down um, the foundations and the criteria for how you become this, right for that right now, we we'll use the term Mount Rushmore. How do you become one of these leaders and how do you maintain the status, right? And we gotta discuss this as well. How do you lose your spot in the Mount Rushmore leadership spot? Because this is not something that's supposed to just be one per one one um, figurehead or one leader, and that's it. No, this is a concept, and it's way deeper than just presidents or whatever you want to call. It. Like, I, it's it's amazing how this still is going on. But like I said, that's that. I just wanted to give y'all an uh, update on how we're gonna break this down and how we're gonna flow through this. But we're gonna start off with a lot of the pop culture stuff going on. The biggest thing right now, undeniably. Um, I guess we could say the Mount Rushmore, a loud mouse, or the person who's on a, for, especially for 2023 in the last couple of years, the Mount Rushmore, a leader of um, having the most ops, having the most beefs online, social media, having actual the most run-ins, and still um, didn't have no real arrests or major issues. Well, now everybody's know, and a lot of people actually celebrate it, Charleston White is now arrested officially right now as we speak. So I've been hearing a lot of different discussions about this. Um, I'll shout out um, Hip Hop Uncensored, Hip Hop Viral News, shout them out, subscribe to their channels and all that. And as well as Death of a Cloud Chaser, subscribe, Kitchen's channel and all that. Um, they're doing a real good job at breaking this down. They're giving a lot of information, and it seems like I'm not. Um, I'm not saying that everybody um, it doesn't acknowledge um, Charleston White's like the positives of him, but it seems like most of the highlights is his negatives, and I understand that from especially from a um, YouTube channel because most of the people actually he like I said he has so many ops that they have an umbrella of people who don't even pretty much know about him that much, but he's just a natural op to them. So it's so much people who are against them in the comments and everything that when get, most people are talking about it, they're talking about it and not necessarily um, 
breaking out any narratives that possibly could be going on. And I'll say this too, um, that's gonna, um, it pokes holes in your, pop, your, your, um, your perspective future. For instance, the, the biggest thing is going on, like in this interview right here, if anybody, shout outs to DJU. You could go check check this out. Um, type it up. It's on YouTube. Check it out. DJU Charleston White interview. He just did this interview. This is I'm I, I'm pretty sure the last um official interview he did because he's literally talking about the fact that he just got the two warrants. So now let's let's get into some narratives, some real narratives for real. If Charleston White is on this channel right here, he's on this show. And like I said, when you look at this, you things will be put together. But he's actually on the show talking about how there's this big time um not gonna he's a gang member i'll just say that i'm not gonna get into his name a big time crip that's in fort worth texas and he's a big time crip and killer in charleston white's words like that's why i said i want to get too deep because this this got a little crazy right from the beginning when he started talking about it you could tell that something serious is going on and let me rewind a bit this dju charleston white interview remember this is new but this hasn't gone viral like the way Charleston White being arrested got went viral. So Charleston White got arrested. People just seeing the charges. They throwing out the animal cruelty thing. That's where we got to really get into narratives. Because that's what happened is now the narrative is the focus of Charleston White being arrested is the fact that he did animal cruelty. But no, that's why I'm going to say shout out to the death of a clout chaser. This is going to add a little narrative and um extra information to what Death for Cloud Chasers was saying. Death for Cloud Chasers said something very important. Shout out to Chuck, Big Chuck. He's like, um, the warrant, like he did the um research, the legal research, and he's like, basically, first it had no bond, then the bond went to, the animal cruelty was the lowest one, 1,000, and the two, um, he got aggravated assault um, charges with a, um, with a, with a weapon. Um, those are the, the, the those are the charges that he had the warrant for. So think about this now. Nobody didn't put the narrative together like this, but if he's saying that this big time crip is snitching, and whatever happened, he's admitting on this interview as well that he used to have a strong and solid relationship with the cops out there in Fort Worth, Texas, or Texas in general, and something happened where. They bump heads and they now are not cool. But he's saying that this person, this crip, got a whole, he's a killer. He got a whole bunch of people who really put in work for him and follow him. But he's actually snitching. So the thing is, it seems like Charleston White is throwing it out there. Like, and, and because everybody's everybody's just like focused on the naked, but like the fact that all the ops are gonna be happy. So everybody's just trying to like salute the ops. I understand it. Charleston White do a lot of bugged out things. Like I've been, like I, I was, I was a fan actually. I, I was a huge supporter of Charleston White right from the beginning, right when he started this thing out on Instagram before all his channels was getting shut, cut, shut off. And when he started getting a little fame, he started to wild out. And I could see the things he was saying about money and all that. He started to bring that in the picture, and he stopped talking. He talked less about the community service. It made like all right. It made it seem like all right, you you really do care about this money, but you acting like you don't because that's that seems like it's part of the act. But I don't have no solid proof of that. What ended up happening is he just started spazzing out and doing the most clout chasing things that make no sense for the message he was choosing. This is before he started really getting into the big the Nipsey and all that disrespect and crip. So he been already trying to figure a way out. It wasn't like he started out just disrespecting hip hop on social media. I want that to be understood. So he's clearly doing stuff for energy, but at the same time, the fact that he's able to walk free and all that, it seemed, it just kind of just meant that he's either untouchable with the law or he really doing so much community service in the streets, he's untouchable in the streets. The point that we're going to get into with this narrative thing is with the fact that he keeps on showing all of these guns, I know y'all saw he got truck low. He, it's literally a time where he probably went a month straight showing a new gun and showing new clips and new magazines and new um um rounds. Like rounds is the size of fingers and rounds. Like he showed all type of ridiculously crazy things. You know, that market in Texas, you it, it is a little, I, I, yeah, whatever. Like we're not going to get there, but that's the rights. So it is what it is. But 
you showing all that nonstop, it, it made me automatically say, well, that seems like he don't have the side of the community. And for someone um, who does community service and understands how that goes, you, you're put on a, it's, it's not an open um, to the public pedestal, but the ones who know that you're doing that community service, the people behind the scenes in the community, the real ones who actually kind of pushing things on a day-to-day -day, um, basis, they're putting you on a pedestal to understand that. You under the wing or under the um, support, not wing, because you're your own leader when you're doing stuff like that. You stand out and you bring other people to start realizing that they should do community service. That doesn't seem like what Charleston White's story is. It seems like he's losing people are moving out from his life, specifically Dewberry. Everybody knows how Dewberry always around. When that fight thing broke down, we all see Dewberry was not like holding it down. Like he talked all that tough gangster stuff. Shout out to Dewberry. I ain't, I'm not, I just, I'm not, all I'm doing is quoting the, rea the reality. That's what you've been doing. If you, if I if I need to go back and show proof of how Dewberry was talking, yeah, like I'm this big tough guy. I'm gonna hold it down for my boy Charleston. That's just what it was. And when that thing happened in the comedy show in Texas, and them boys ran up on them stage, and you try to throw the bass, the the, the pot or whatever, Dewberry didn't hold it down. And fast forward to today, Charleston White has already publicly acknowledged the fact that he got rid of Dewberry. So. He's losing the closest people who was with him. And that's a real sign of things going to your head or things going maybe to his head. I'm not, like I said, I don't know. But what I'm seeing in the point that we're going to get to now with the finality, the finalization of this narrative is that here we go. If he has the warrant out for his rest for these hammers, two guns, we saw Charleston Wright with a whole lot of guns and rounds. That counts as well. If you have these things legally, obviously it's good. Not if you have them illegally, especially in a state like Texas. Why would you have illegal guns if you have all this access to legal guns, market shops and all this stuff? So that raises extra suspicion if you got legal guns and illegal guns. are you? But that seems like you're planning on doing something illegal with them, illegal guns. Y'all follow me? So here's a narrative. That dude probably is the one who sold it to him. That that he he's probably connected. That guy who they saying is a snitch. If Charleston White is right, and Charleston White did claim already in his own words, he's connected to the Crips. If he's connected to the Crips, and that guy snitched on him, and actually provided him with them illegal guns for whatever reason, and and for somebody who, if you don't know about having um legal guns, I'm not gonna say too much about it. Besides the fact that in certain states. You have to always account for every time you renew your certification, every round you have. So when you when you first start, how much rounds do you have? Anytime you purchase rounds, you got to let them know. And you got to let them know because they basically need to know if, if any of them rounds are missing. That means something probably happened with that. So this is what getting that license and certification for your hammer is very important. And the things that go on a bit, they take serious. So when you got something legal mixed with that, it definitely something stands out suspicious. And now if this guy, now this Crip guy, this OG, he really is a snitch. Is that trying, does that mean that the cops went against Charleston White or Charleston White went against them because he's not snitching? You see, this is the thing. It's so much negativity that we're not even giving him a possibility that he could be actually on some righteous stuff. He said something important in this interview. And now Big Chuck, I'm going to tag you and all that, but... Uh, definitely couch chase. Definitely, when I heard it, I thought you was kind of like you you took it the wrong way. But that's my opinion, and this is the point that I want to make. Charles White in the same interview with DJU, he was like, "Yo, this Crip OG, he's the real snitch." But when it come down to me, I just talk that in the public. I don't really do that stuff in the community. I don't really do. I don't really um snitch on nobody in the community. And definitely couch chase. The big Chuck was like, "Yeah, you see, he's a fraud. I told you, he's a liar." Now, granted. That is clout chasing type of stuff. That is stuff that you do when you do it, when you're not keeping it real. If you if you if you just creating your own self narratives just because you want to get views, likes, and all that type of stuff, that is definitely something to be called out. And it's fraudulent. It's fraud, charlatan energy. But if you look at that a little deeper, what he's saying, and add it into the fact that this OG crit possibly is snitching, the cops don't like Charleston White right now, and Charleston White is saying he's not actually snitching. If all of those are true and we put them together, that means that the cops, the narratives is 
the cops is trying to do something where they got both sides of the coin. You see, they got the guy in the street and the guy who's pup, the guy in the streets who everybody's thinking is the most real or most thorough, who they could come to for anything, get illegal guns and all that type of stuff. He's never going to snitch on them. And then they still got the other side of the coin where Charleston White is on their side under their wing, where he's snitching publicly, letting it be known and not and, and being protected by them secretly. Here's the point now. That would kind of mean that Charleston White turned his back on being a fraud for the community. That will literally, literally mean that if that's all true, that Charleston White is actually on some Malcolm X type stuff. Yeah, that's the reality. It seems clout shape, like that's what I'm saying. It, it could go either way. But the fact that everybody, this is what I want to say, and I'm going to end it off before we get to the next topic now. Uh, this is still the introduction. Like I said, it's going to be a lot, there's a lot to discuss today. But this Charleston White thing just popped up and is very interesting. But here, check this out though, right? If you are automatically just saying and throwing shade on Charleston White, saying, yeah, he's no good, get rid of him, cancel him. After all this stuff going on, if you celebrate his arrest and you already, you know the history story behind this stuff, that is a clear indication that you are, might be very, very ignorant to the facts. And that's all right. A lot of people, especially in this culture, they're very ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean stupid. Ignorant means they ignore the facts. Ignore, ignorant. Ignore is in the word ignorant. Study etymology and you'll understand these. This is universal law. This is universal languages. It's not stupidity, it's ignorance. They know the facts. And because that it is the way, if the, they know how to manipulate as well. So they go the way that's going to lead to views and all that type of stuff. So getting into this, um, back to this Charleston White thing, there's something else that I want to mention before we move off. The animal cruelty is the biggest thing that everybody's talking about right now. But like I said, the two warrants that he got arrested for, that they, the cops came for, was for the aggravated assault with the um with the weapon. We'll we'll figure out the details of that. Like you, that can mean a lot of uh, many different things. And that's why a lot of people are saying he pistol with a dog because the animal cruelty thing says non livestock, so it got to be some type of pet. And I heard like somebody mentioned like it could be a tiger. They would have said illegal because that's not a legal pet in, in, in nowhere. It, it's not a legal pet in the nation. You're not gonna, you're supposed to have a tiger just running around like that right now. Um, and he would have been that's somebody who wants the clout and attention. So he would have been showing that. So I'm pretty sure it's like a cat or a dog. Here's the last narrative now, the conclusion to this. When they came for them two, remember, he's arrested for three charges. When they came to arrest him with the warrant for them two guns. They saw him doing something to a cat or a dog. I'm going to guess, I, for my experience in the hood, when you in the trenches, dog fighting, and um, that's in, in, in this community, our community right here, that's one of the biggest things. It's not as big since Mike Vick, but it's still, listen, people like to gamble, y'all. If y'all don't know how these things work, they don't want to see the dogs really fight. They don't care about that. They get the dogs and they juice them up. They beast, put them all on type of steroids, feed them gunpowder. They do a lot of vicious things just for the money, just to gamble. Nothing else. There's nothing else. They're not like it's not like they put and giving these these things, these animals, these dogs steroids, um, having them train and chew on all type of tires and get stronger and give them um all type of gunpowder being put and mixed into their food. They don't do this viciousness. But to be to make them guard dogs and protect the house or protect their their whatever um around surroundings, they do this just to gamble and make money off of the animals. So that animal cruelty thing is way bigger than people make it seem like, and it's a very big deal when you're connected to that. But the fact that it's only a thousand dollar on bond means that they probably don't have enough information on it yet, and that's why it's so low. Or they probably only caught him doing something and he was able to like um clear it up, and they only got the like the end of it. Or they're gonna do some investigation that's gonna get bigger. Or he could he could have just like you said he probably had a, he could have had a a gun and pistol with the dog or something like that. Like somebody put that narrative out. But whatever's going on, I'm pretty I'm saying for a fact from the from all the if, information we got, if everything we got is true, honestly, they went for them two warrants for the gun and for the guns for whatever reason. Somebody told on him. We could say it's the um, OG crib. And they end up getting him for that animal cruelty after. And that animal cruelty thing might be as big as the guns. That's the main point. So that's that with that. We also can't forget about um, Kanye. Um, 
Kanye is not that different from Charleston White. I just wanted to um throw that out there. Um, as a matter of fact, let let's let's you see, Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. Where do I even start with this 